Now, our, our next story uh, has is about Spinal with... Tap. <laughs> Stonehenge. <laughs> Stonehenge. Yep. No one knows who they were. Well, what but they were people doing. are trying, and that's the point of doing the story. Exactly. People are exactly. trying to understand it. And this is precisely what's at the heart of this story, is Stonehenge, and uh, and despite Spinal Tap's assertions, in fact, we are getting closer to knowing more about the people who built the monument. Or actually, sorry, more to the point, the people who were buried close to the monument. And this is really important. Uh, strontium isotop isotopic research, so looking at uh, the type of the groundwater that people were consuming in particular when they when were they're growing up when they're growing up yeah. uh, and also actually later in life because you, you can do a comparison between that's true. early and late life um has has revealed that at least 10 out of 25 individuals uh whose brittle charred bone remains it says here in the guardian article were found at stonehenge in cremation burials uh, at least 10 of the, the 10 out of 25 individuals came from uh wales now this this is this this is one of those moments where uh, uh, as a as a you know proud Welshman um, I'm painfully aware of some of the some of the slightly more esoteric elements of of Welsh culture uh, in the nationalised Deathwood the great gathering of Welsh uh, Welsh poetry literature farming and and creativity at the heart of that gathering is the of modern Druids part of the so-called modern cycle of Druidism. Which... This is the Druidism that started in the 18th century as a reaction to the growth of nationalism in the so-called Celtic countries, the growth of the Welsh language, Ga Gaelic and so on, Yeah, folk, yeah. In folk music and all of that. Yeah. So it has actually no connection with prehistory at all. No, exactly. No, no, no direct protection, but pro uh, protection um, connection with, with Iron Age Druids, uh, as mentioned primarily, for example, in the writings of Caesar. Um, yeah. But also... Uh, in the case of Stonehenge, we know that, that there were early archaeologists, people like Stukeley himself, who were trying to sort of do a, a form of reenactment uh, combined with, I guess you could say, charitably call it uh, experimental archaeology, to try and understand what at that time were called Druidic monuments. People referred to Stonehenge and Castle Rig and um, stone circles on the Orkney Islands and, and actually, frankly, across the country there were hundreds of these things as um, as, as Druidic in nature. Uh, all of this sort of interacts in pop culture to, to mean that lots of people will see this headline and indeed have seen this headline and they say, there you go, precisely, confirmed. Druids, Stonehenge. But we need to be really careful to, 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 and this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to examine this story in this, this month's watching brief, is to sort of pull apart and make sure that some of those assumptions don't necessarily cross-pollinate too much. Because uh, there's, a, there's a final fa factor here, a final complicating factor, and that is that one of the phases of Stonehenge, uh, and actually this is a phase that, that is quite close to when these burials were put in the ground, or these human, these human remains were deposited, uh, does involve the so-called blue stones that from the do Preseli come, Hills, yeah, yeah, Preseli Hills that do come yeah. from from the uh, seemingly a quarry in Wales as well. So, I would I would suggest that, that that this definitely means there's a Welsh connection, or certainly a connection to what is now Wales. Obviously, there was no no national border between Wales and Stonehenge then, um, but it doesn't mean that the monument is a Welsh monument, as it were. <laughs> Well, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that's a really important point to make. And in fact, the point about no borders as well, at least no borders as we understand them today, we, 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 there may have been borders of cultural and uh, you know, tribal culture, tribal politics, hmm. um, or even proto-states of some kind, but mm -hmm. we just don't know at the moment. That's a developing area of study. I think it's really important to look at this, though, because only recently we might have been doing this story and it would have been about how Stonehenge is associated with people from what's now the Low Countries, from uh, Belgium and Holland, because mm -hmm. the Strontian work on the so-called Amesbury Archer showed that he had grown up in an area that was most likely to be that area of what's now uh, you know, Western Europe. Hmm. So, well, and know, also recent archaeological evidence uh, moving away from the osteology and the bones, hmm. because you've got to remember that the human, the the, the 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 burials at the monument happened after the monument was at least in part built. So this is a yes. multi-phase monument over the course of many hundreds of years. Um, uh, 
or hundreds of years, uh, the, 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 uh, some of the archaeological research strongly indicates that just up the road, a place like um, uh, Durrington Walls, yeah. people were probably living there and in, and at least uh, in part responsible for, for, for bits of Stonehenge as well. And, so, and, and, and most intriguingly, intriguingly, and it's where I was talking about proto-states and proto-cultural entities, or cultural entities, larger mm -hmm. cultural entities, um, this monument may have been like a sort of cultural magnet pulling people in. The, the, the issue around the um, the cattle that appear to have come from the north of Britain mm. that have been mm. found in the area. Mm -hmm. um, as though and pottery that's come down from Scotland. Precisely, and, oh, well, precisely. Yeah. yeah. So you know, so it, 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 while it's very easy to associate these things with modern entities like Wales, like Holland, mm -hmm. like England like Scotland. In fact, what we're dealing with is a fascinating puzzle about how these peoples, you know, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000 BC, interacted across much longer distances than routinely across much longer distances than people once envisaged. Well, and the, frankly, frankly, if the much longer distances than we routinely interact. <laughs> like, you know, I don't routinely get, re receive material from, from the low countries. You know, like, yeah. uh, I've never had someone drop off pottery with me from from from, <laughs> <laughs> from Central Europe. Yeah. A, new, a new tea set from Brussels. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a it's a fascinating a fascinating story that's developing, and it's frustrating. And I think it's alluded to in the reporting that that mm -hmm. um, that these. We're getting so much better at dating this material as well, mm -hmm. and the dates are slowly sort of aligning together, but they're still not close enough to put A but together with B to make C. The word tantalising is used, uh, I think, in more than one yeah. report. Yeah. Uh, and actually, you know, despite our, our modern preoccupation with Stonehenge, you know, Stonehenge as a monument, uh, the archaeology really is is indicating that, that that the prehistoric world may have had as you say, a much more routine, long-distance connection between different sites, various sites in various places. But actually, in the case of British archaeology, that that our our southern focus in terms of this time and in, uh, in in history may may be completely wrong. Archaeology on Orkney at the moment is showing an astonishing site, which I, I can't wait to, to to for that thing to be to be fully excavated and, and published, uh, which is an, analogous to a cathedral, which may actually even be the focus of of the the cultural influences that we see at sites like Stonehenge, you know, the the whole world was a different was different, and people viewed their 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 place in the world differently to what we do today. It's it, except that I think you can still identify the the idea that people are prepared to make pilgrimages over long distances for something they really believe in. Now, okay, mm. in in modern Western societies, our pilgrimages have become more secular we go on holiday mm -hmm, we go on mm -hmm. a touring holiday sometimes mm -hmm. you know uh, and drive quite long distances maybe to go camping around europe or something like that mm -hmm. we certainly there's just been a major cultural pilgrimage to russia for the world cup mm -hmm, but you mm -hmm. look at you look at other cultural groups and the idea of you know we, we've we've just recently had the annual hajj where devout mm -hmm. muslims will go to mecca at least once in their lifetime Mm -hmm. uh, there are the big Hindu festivals that you see in India where people will go to the Ganges or whatever uh, 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 whatever location. Uh, you know, th this idea of travelling a long way to express your cultural and religious belief mm. is something that seems to be there for us. So I don't think it should be a surprise maybe that you know, this, this was happening at, you know, at the monuments in, the, in, in, in prehistory. No, 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 no. Uh, and, and, uh, and also actually it, it it opens up a tantalising possibility that some of this this movement of material might have been for for reasons uh, that don't have to be drenched in solemn, uh, you know, a, a pilgrimage. It could actually be, uh, as you say, like like a football tournament. It could be something where people come together to to do something. Maybe it's a sport, or maybe it's a it's a. It's a for example, at um, 
I think it's at Derrington Walls actually, there's a very strong indication that people would gather to to reenact a sort of an artificial hunt. You loose pigs into a theatre and mm. shoot bow and arrows at them in a way to sort of reminisce about the glory of hunting in a forest, but in a in a in a sort of a, a focused way, almost like like uh, you know like a sports arena. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, and also, I mean, the, the, um, a few years ago, I had the privilege of working on uh, a, a survey at, at Chisholm Midden on Salisbury Plain, mm. and there you have this incredible hump in the landscape, which is basically the debris of pre-Roman Iron Age feasting. And I suppose it's worthwhile just reiterating that. The lump mm. is made out of meal after meal after meal after meal, just building up over time. That's, that's Absolutely. incredible. It's, it's, like, it's, like a, it's, it's almost like a, a British equivalent of a, a, an urban tell in the Middle East, except that it, it's the debris of a party. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and actually, okay, just just as like a, a final point in this one, we're coming back to Stonehenge. You know how every year there's this sort of this uh, solemn shaking of heads when people leave all their plastic and nonsense behind uh, after the uh, after the the, the summer. And, and, and English Heritage count the money that they've made on the car park. Well, indeed. Oh, sorry, yes. I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but when people sort of you know are, are astonished at how people are treating the site. Um, in fact, actually, an awful lot of the material that we hold so dear as archaeologists comes from people doing precisely that, turning up, feasting, leaving behind rubbish, rubbish. although often in a much more structured way. I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily leave tents behind. But, <laughs> but, but, but look, we, you know, we've got colleagues now who have excavated the site of the Woodstock Festival and the Isle of Wight Festival that took place yeah. in 60, 68, 69, you know. Early seventies, yeah, and, and those are very similar sort of cultural gatherings where people come from all over to converse, mm -hmm. to be okay, to be entertained in those cases, but uh, but to express their culture, mm -hmm. to express mm -hmm. the culture of wanting to listen to Jimi Hendrix play the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, yeah, you and know? also and also actually, you know, at various music festivals and. Uh, prehistoric sites to find alternate altered states of consciousness shall we say absolutely <laughs> uh, well, in fact some would argue it's central to the ritual, ritual. exactly yeah yeah um and we're not just talking about about uh yeah uh, music festivals um right. no